Okay, so I'm going to try and tackle this topic, keeping the family together amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, uh, well, I have been in, from a family point, just to put you in perspective. In April, we celebrated our 19th year. And uh, currently we are officially, since March, fathers of only teens. Yeah? So the eldest is 18 and the youngest is 13. Yeah? So, you can see that they came very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to, to go through this agenda, a uh, little introduction. Uh, the foundation of our relationship is a bit uh, conk, but you will eventually get the gist of it. And then a little self-reflection just to be able to, you know, look at ourselves before, before the COVID, because a lot of the tensions that people may have, or even the joys, because it's not always tensions. And now we are hearing there's an increase in domestic violence, or there's an increase in tension and agitation among ourselves. It's not, you know, in isolation to probably how we were before. Yeah, so it's good to just take that little journey. Uh, and I know this journey may be important also for us to to apply it, especially in these moments when we are normally forced home. Yeah? So you're forced home on holidays, normally, and people get lost yeah? initially. There's also uh, weekends, we are also forced home. In public holidays, sometimes we are forced home. Uh, and uh, even during leave, when we are on leave, we are also forced home. And uh, so we can apply some of these principles in this setup where we are forced home and we have to then live with the people at home. And then we can come and construct a little, what can I do? And we close and uh, way forward, yeah? Um, okay, being okay. Uh, what is being okay? Yeah. Um, and I will just approach it from two traditions. Um, there is a tradition of what people more or less talk about feeling. It borders around feeling healthy, feeling good, feeling satisfied, emotionally content, and so on, uh, which is what we are calling a hedonia uh, tradition. Uh, normally, it is, it is a healthy function. Yeah? It's, it's more of a psychological tradition. It's, 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 it's newer because uh, the people who now on the alternative the eudaimonia, eudaimonia and hedonia are Greek ones. Uh, eudaimonia, the real, uh, the, the best word to equate eudaimonia in English is what people call flourishing, yeah? Uh, being able to flourish, yeah? So, so there is a health functioning, psychological tradition vis-a-vis -vis the tradition we've always known for many years, which is uh, flourishing, as I'm trying to explain, and being happy, but happiness, you, you know, when you go through an Aristotelian, Aristotle from mystic tradition, is really, it, it, it happens when you are living virtues, yeah? Uh, of course, one of the challenges of an Aristotel, Aristotelian Thomistic tradition when you're looking at being okay, is that sometimes you can be too hard on, you know, these virtues that you kind of forget that we are also psychological beings, we have feelings, we have emotions. Um, and I think the balance of understanding these two is what this little diagram we're calling the fulfilled life, yeah? What I'm calling being okay. So I think this as a principle is important because uh, for us to be able to say uh, we are anxious or we are not exactly feeling like things are in, we are in control of things, it's important to understand ourselves from this perspective uh, so that then we are able to know, you know where we are coming from ourselves. Yeah? So the Aristotelian Thomistic tradition more or less summarizes that uh, to be happy, to flourish, uh, is to live a virtuous life. Yeah? And, uh, I don't know about you, many times I have found uh, that uh, it's good to look at the other uh, creation that exists to always remind ourselves of things that are very obvious, yeah? 
uh, yesterday I remember my, one of my daughters said we need to be drinking, sipping water through the day. I am mean, not exactly an advocate of all these water carrying projects that people have. And uh, I always recall when I was young, uh, looking at animals, or, you know, I mean, I grew up in the farm. And uh, when looking at the whole logic of animals, you, you find that the logic is that they will drink water when they are thirsty. They will drink a lot of water when they are thirsty. Um, so I always have found very interesting, uh, you could say, reflections on myself when I look at the other creation. Yeah? Uh, okay, here is a flower. We are saying that if, if a flower has to eventually bloom or has to flourish, then you have to give it water, you have to give it light, you have to feed it a little, etc. And with that, it will grow and bloom. And uh, human beings can flourish as well, but what makes them flourish? What makes them bloom? What makes them be what they should be? Uh, according to Aristotle and those who have followed that uh, line of thought of Aristotle, is among other things, uh, just summarizing it, is to live a, live a virtuous life. Yeah? So that is the tradition. Yeah? To be okay means that you need to be uh, full of virtue, you need to be struggling to, to live virtue. Yeah? And these are just some the summary of some of the virtues um, that uh, we know about. If you want to follow this line of thought, um, so you could say this is a, a new follower of these ideas. Alex Havert, he's written a number of books that you can read. I think he's, re he's written a book on leadership, a virtuous leadership, a very good book. In fact, this whole uh, diagram you see here is really what he has captured in uh, virtuous leadership. And you can also visit this site to see uh, a few other principles or ideas he, he has. That for us to bloom as human beings, then we must have these these things yeah? uh, very very clear in our in our living. Yeah? Um, and so anyway, I don't want to take you into some deep anthropology. You probably have an idea about these things. Uh, but at the center here, you have cardinal virtues that are essential, very emphasized by the Aristotelian or mystic tradition. Uh, later on, because of, of course, the fact that there are many other ideas that have come, especially after for those who follow uh, any religion, uh, you know that religion in the in the man in the with the center of Christ, we find that there are other things that have been elaborated to us. Yeah, uh, so here is uh, humility. Yeah, you know humility and magnanimity, striving for great group, uh, things. Uh, also, other other virtues that are essential, and uh, you could already you can already begin seeing that we are moving out of uh, just the you could say the traditional cardinal virtues here and of other things. Yeah. So anyway, if you want to read a bit more of what Alexa Bard has done, he's been a visiting professor in this university a number of times. I know every every summer I think he tries to come. Um, and uh, many of these ideas are there you can think about. But in summary, just going back to the foundation or the introduction of where I was coming from, is that for us to bloom from an Aristotelic or mystic tradition, what we need to do is to live in virtue. Yeah? And then of course we have the psychological tradition. One of the things about the psychological tradition, and uh, this is in the emotional feeling world, is that normally they get better words to describe many things that we go through. Yeah, so for this particular idea, which was built by uh, Swabik, Dr. Peggy Swabik, uh, is the wellness, yeah, yeah psychologically, because the emotion and uh, feelings world articulate very clearly how we are feeling, you find that they have better ways of expressing what it means to be okay. Yeah? So we are still on the topic of being okay. And uh, there are those eight dimensions uh, that are clearly mentioned there. If you want to read more, you can visit this center that Dr. Peggy Swarbik is involved in. Uh, I know generally in the world at the moment, especially from a HR perspective, you keep hearing about this topic of, of wellness. Yeah? 
and uh, those buzzwords are coming from this, you could say this academic concept that have been built by Swarthik and eventually I think others have followed this line. And it's very nice. I, I like it. They have a little uh, booklet which you can download from this site that tries to help you come up with specific ideas on what you can do in each of these areas. Yeah? So to be more emotionally, uh, uh, we could say well, physically well, and so on. Yeah? So this is just uh, some ideas you can think about. Yeah? So, and there is a little bit more description uh, of that. There is a toolkit I have mentioned, which you can eventually download it here. Uh, and there's, yeah, some more description of what these areas mean. Okay, uh, so then uh, that is just an intro to put you into perspective that there are those two ideas. On one hand, virtue, on the other hand, just a concept of wellness. Uh, they more or less, uh, you could say, meet somewhere. Uh, this is the next thing I'm beginning, the foundation of our relationship, uh, that uh, looking at the two traditions, uh, wellness and uh, from an Aristotelian domestic perspective and the wellness from a psychological perspective, the critical thing where they meet and what is important, especially in this particular talk, when we are saying we want, we want to understand how we are okay as a family, is really uh, the idea of good habits. Yeah? that uh, 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 to, be, to be okay <laughs> means that we have persistently worked on certain things that we know are essential to our being okay. And this is what we call good habits. We form the good habits of, for example, one of the critical good habits in these days, in these times that we are all uh, confined at home is as simple as, you know, waking up on time, yeah, being up, the first thing in the morning because when you're able to manage that battle then everything else works yeah and these days i don't know about you but i don't know whether it is because i'm getting older but it appears these days that people also have a problem with the end of the day and sleeping on time yeah because i think we have too many options of what we can do we can either take the path of working with our whatsapp the whole night we can either decide to take a series and watch it the whole night or there are all sorts of alternative uh, movies and videos and channels that for some reason we also have a challenge with uh, ending the day and these two principles yeah i mean just looking at them uh, from a happy point of view uh are very essential for keeping us sane at home yeah and if you were to take any anything out of this seminar or out of this webinar, if you will forget everything else, just think about whether you have a good habit of being up on time, being up on time, and being is it being down or sleeping down or going to sleep on time. Yeah, if you manage those two, then it can be very flourishing for us we can bloom because then we can eventually manage our time better we can be able to know how to predict things better and if you're in a family setting setting where you are now in a family setup you have children and so on this is very essential also right? to be able to apply to your children because if you don't manage that then all these frictions that we will have at home We'll start emerging out of, you know, you are supposed to be in class. So many of us are doing online classes now. You're not, you're late, you're always late. The teachers are complaining, you know, breakfast is not served or breakfast is served later or you don't know when lunch is, you know, it's just total disorder, yeah? And precisely because of these things, then we lose our peace. So I think it's very essential to be able to just know that the key to our keeping our family safe and for us to be safe, to be able to manage ourselves better, it is very essential that we generate uh, some good habits. Yeah? Okay, now uh, I will not go to the next idea because it may confuse you. It's a bit com complicated to discuss it. I think uh, I've already summarized uh, some of those principles. Again, I probably have hinted on this a bit, but uh, I will just load all of it and just explain a few things just for you to 
to have an idea. Generally, uh, we have to always remember that we have our intangible part and our tangible part. Yeah. So our intangible part is what we call the soul. Uh, this is just uh, philosophical anthropology one on one on one. It's just this is a whole course. This whole diagram can take you a whole semester to learn something about uh, the human person. Yeah. But just for the sake of this meeting, uh, for this webinar, just to summarize, the intangible part is really what makes us get into this thing of being unhappy or not happy, yeah? being content or not content. Because we know we, we are much more than you know, things you can touch and feel. Yeah? So it's very important to, to realize yeah, that the, the intangible, the soul must master the body. Yeah? And uh, just taking the example of waking up on time and sleeping on time, you, you, you know as a principle, even while I'm speaking to you today and right now, you know that it is an important principle. But behind it, you know that there are certain challenges in life. And most of those challenges many times are driven by, you know, the laxity that you have from feelings or emotions or uh, just general laziness. Yeah? which may come out of, uh, you know, say activating more of our senses. Yeah? So for example, one of the things that will happen is I would prefer to watch a movie, watch a series uh, and so on. Yeah? But I think one of the things that is very important is really from a relationship point of view, at this level of our body, is the idea of temperament. Yeah? Um, just to take you through very quickly, uh, when we say we have a good personality, what do we normally mean? We normally mean that you are able to combine very well uh, your ability to decide, to build your own character, and your ability to manage your temperament. Yeah? So they say personality is equal to character plus temperament. Yeah? Uh, character is in the realm of, uh, of our intangible, of our spirit, yeah, that I can decide to live good habits. Actually, it's really the good habits, the domain of good habits is in the, is in the, is in the, is in the soul, is in the intangible, where I utilize my intellect. I know things, I decide things, and then I act, okay? And I drive this yeah, intangibly to my body. Then temperament is an important thing, especially from a relationship point of view. And, uh, and then we are now getting into this issue of relationship. So the issue we are at, the reason why we may have tension is because we are saying we are at home. So how are those relationships? Yeah? And uh, it's very important to be able to master this inborn tendency to react in a certain way, emotionally and behaviorally. Because this first instinct yeah, of action precisely if, if it is not well managed if you don't know it yourself if you don't know that normally you can be a both the way you express yourself or say certain things and many times it comes out of the your own tendency yeah? uh, just to give you an example this morning i asked one of our sons to to go and get something in the kitchen and he went and came back he had forgotten yeah? and we have been fighting about this thing for a long time and my wife commented that you see, we have no problems as the sanguine. So one of the temperaments that we encounter is, is the sanguine temperament. Yeah? They are very forgetful. Yeah? Uh, so these things can bother you. Yeah? And you see, if you don't know that, you, and I know in the past when we were growing up, we found parents exploding on us. Yeah? Uh, I have one big challenge with this very son of mine because to wake up in the morning is a disaster for him. And this morning we were still discussing about it and said, look, he has to get his own alarm clock and wakes himself. Because we can't we can only be woken up by people. But if you go deep down to find out where is the challenge, you, you discover that it's actually in his inborn tenets. Uh, you know, he is more of the life, life, the, people's person in last life. So to drive yourself is, is a bit difficult. Yeah? So I think it's very important to do a little reflection around this. And later on, I'll give you a site where you can be able to do 
a bit of this to be able to understand, okay, what is my general temperament? Yeah, because conflicts and clashes come from this. So I wanted us to go through a little self-reflection. Uh, we are saying we are 70, 30. Um, just uh, to be able to understand a little uh, before COVID. Um, I, and I just wanted to, to say, highlight this just to help you that uh, it, 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 it's important and it's a very good practice. If there's another thing you can uh, take home out of this webinar, is this idea of uh, always trying to bring together what is scattered um, and uh, if possible, putting God as a center of what we are doing and plan. Yeah? So a very important idea to keep reflecting. Yeah? The opposite, of course, is uh, superficiality. Uh, our senses take over. Uh, and therefore, we, we will always, as I gave this example initially, uh, looking at the flower versus ourselves, if we are not able to live based on who we are, we will always find ourselves unsettled with an unsettled purpose, scattered attention, a deadened will, and a quickened concupiscence. Quickened concupiscence, uh, quickened, uh, you know, you, we are activated more by the senses. Yeah? So it, it's important to, to bring back ourselves and see, you know, we are much more than and just, you know, feelings. Yeah? So I'm going to take you through another poll, just bring out some aspect of the dimension. What do you see uh, are some of the, you know, what's your, your more or less your, your feel based on the eight dimensions of wellness or a number of virtues? Um, where, where do you see, especially before COVID, you know what, what how would you judge from a zero to ten where you want before COVID? So that we are able then to see, even before COVID, what were our challenges around from a relationship point, based on the eight dimensions of wellness and uh, the four or five or sort of artists that I've made that I will demonstrate to you. So that we see where potentially our problem is. Yeah? So there are eight dimensions. So the question is to consider what is the aspect of wellness that has been your biggest challenge, yeah? Uh, okay, it may not, I know we've been out for three or so months now, uh, so we may not remember too well how we, we were from pre-COVID, but I think it's a very, just take a bit of time to ask yourself, from those eight dimensions, what, where have you had a challenge? Yeah? Okay, so I'll share with you the results. So just pre-COVID, it appears 47% of us felt financial from the eight dimensions of wellness is the biggest challenge, yeah? uh, followed by, okay, there are two that are tying there, emotional, coping with life, and having satisfying relationship, and, uh, and then uh, physical is the second. So we have financial and the two are tying emotional and physical. So if, if I could just get a reaction from you, if you've chosen financial or emotional, or if you just want to generally comment, why would we say these are the key challenges um, for people from uh, you know, feeling good, being able to feel that their relationship are satisfying, yeah? F. Bundy. Yes. Yes, Hello. go ahead. I consider being uh, physically unable to go out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my diet, my physical is challenged. It's like challenged. now, the, yeah, like now I'm in the house. I would not mm -hmm. be in the house at this time of the day. Mm -hmm. I would be out either at work or walking. I'm working from home. So I find that very restraining. And I'm in Mombasa, so it's even worse. We are not allowed to be anywhere outside, really. So for me, that's uh, a big challenge. Of okay. course, that comes with my diet, because uh, <laughs> we're always in the kitchen. <laughs> or, 
or around the kitchen, uh, you are with a mug of anything or a cup of anything. Uh, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, when you're up and down, then you restrain what you use for all your activities, including your financial, because you know what to buy. And now I'm confused on how long we'll be in in the house and uh, how long the whole period will take. Yeah. And that challenges even up to if my employer will finally say they don't need us because we are at home. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bandi. Thank you for those insights. Uh, and probably it resonates with many of us. Uh, you, I think you talk about a physical restriction. You can't do much. I think in Mombasa it's probably double, double. Um, then you, you're forced to eating. Then I think eventually you connected it with the issue of financial. Uh, there is uncertainty. You don't know what will happen, whether you will keep your job, etc. So, uh, and I think uh, here at the university, one of the things we had done is uh, before we engaged in a seminar where we talked about just general wellness, one of the things that we went through before was mental wellness. Yeah. Uh, and I think some of the aspects that you're raising uh, around mental wellness, especially around anxiety, and I think looking at the event we had in the university here and also a certain survey we are running, a countrywide survey we are running, you know, from a psychosocial perspective, uh, the issue that people are raising as the biggest concern is anxiety. And we are anxious because we don't know. Uh, we don't know what will happen. We are already anxious because we are constrained into a way we are not naturally meant to be. We are social people. We are meant to be out there engaging with others, talking with others. So within us, we already have this challenge of an aspect of our mental health. Um, and it, it makes us lose peace. Yeah. So very good uh, contribution there. And I think we need to be aware that these things affect us, yeah. affect us greatly. And I think the critical thing then is to look back and say, I know I am anxious, or I know I have these restrictions, but I need to confront it. Yeah? I need to be able to tell myself, I will not let it out to the people I'm close with, yeah? people I'm, I'm with. Already we can see here, one of the challenges is the 47% of, of financial, yeah? And I think you've hinted on it, uh, Bandi, uh, that we don't know from uh, if we are employed, what will happen. Some of the ones who are in business already have been complaining for a long time, saying there's no business. So there is a bit of uncertainty, and this is causing us anxiety. And what we need to do, very important, Another take home would be to accept that anxiety can actually make you lose your peace. Yeah? Okay, any other uh, contribution? Betty, you want to say something? Yes. Uh, my name is Betty. Uh, mine have said about issues of financial because uh, you look at it now, some of us, we have extension families and the extension families are all now here. And um, for my case, I have two families in Mombasa and in Nairobi. So mm -hmm. my children are locked, part of my children are locked in Nairobi and the other part I have in Mombasa with the extension family. So you see that you have to be uh, both supporting both houses in Nairobi mm -hmm. and Mombasa. Uh, you have to buy food the other side and you have to give instruction. Hey guys, you can't eat three times a day. You have to eat maybe twice. You need to reduce your capacity of eating. These are children which you don't even see them. You're just speaking on the phone. Uh, because you buy food for this week, for two weeks, and they say, hey, mama, chakula is finished. I say, what, guys, are you taking lunch, breakfast, dinner? Oh, yeah, no, no lunch. You, because we are working late, you have, now the problem, they're also in Zoom, in school, they're working early, so they have to take also, because I have two candidates in Form 4. So you mm -hmm. see, that is a big challenge. To me, I have, think COVID have made me to spend a lot of money, which I... Mm -hmm. I don't think so. The other thing is about emotion. I am um, 
I'm somebody who depends on medication. Mm-hmm. And I normally go for my doctor's appointments. So you call in a doctor and the doctor say, uh, I'm sorry, Betty, we accuse. If it is emergency, go to emergency. You go to emergency, you get everything is COVID. Mm-hmm. You see, everything is COVID because now our doctors, our personal doctors cannot open their clinic. Mm. They can only open on case of emergency. But mm. now the doctor tells you, please go to maybe like I'm in Mombasa, go to Mombasa Hospital or Aga Khan or anywhere. Then if there is an emergency, uh, you call me. Mm. Meaning that your medication now, it is an issue for you. Yeah. And you can't buy this medication on the chemist direct. You have, the doctor must write for you. So it's like we are also zooming with doctors. The mm. doctor is zooming you and they say, okay, Betty, I'm writing, uh, pass through the hospital and takwani ne wacha hapa. Clinic officer to call the doctor and mm. tell, instruct the doctor what type of medication, your continuous medication. So you see things, those are the issues which I think we, we are facing and uh, we, know to, we need to work on them so okay. that we can Thank you, thank you, Betty. Thank you for that contribution. Uh, I, I remember the first time, thing that happened after the first month is we actually realized with my wife that the food budget had actually doubled. Yeah, completely doubled. And uh, I, I think, uh, of course, if you had several constraints from a financial point, uh, of course, you would uh, get shocked and surprised. Yeah. So I think one of the things we had to go through. And maybe it's something to think about is to say, okay, let's look at this. Your, our usual budget was X, but uh, we need to now look at how we can fund that budget. Just even to get a peace of mind of realizing that one, of course you're going to eat more because before you're only doing a lunch or a breakfast and sometimes some of us do breakfast, which is just a cup of tea or water. But now you're doing lunch, you're, I mean, you're doing breakfast, you're doing lunch, you're doing uh, dinner, and uh, it calls for as a bit of adjustment. Just from a budget point, that's number one. Uh, I think when I shared these thoughts with some people earlier, uh, one of the things that came up as a possible challenge we all have, whether pre or before COVID, is just the issue of making sure we are very clear on our budget, yeah? And always having the practice. It's one of those good habits we have to form of always just doing the budget and putting things down so that you see where they are going. When we, when we did this with my wife, when, as I was saying, eventually we realized we were actually spending uh, twice the amount, uh, we doubled the budget for food, and then also we had a new animal called uh, bandwidth, which has never existed. We used to use 1,000 bob- bundles, not even uh, wireless or whatever. We just used to use a bundle for 1,000 a month, and it's okay. The first month, it went to, I think, 23,000, yeah? And we were still using bundles, and eventually we made the decision that, look, okay, let us get a wireless thing, at least that one you can be able to have a certain limit, I think 9K or something per month. But I think what is important, and I think looking at this back and forth, whether pre or before COVID or even in normal life, from a relationship point of view, uh, and, and this applies across, applies to family, applies to single people. The aspect of budgeting is very important. Yeah? And uh, many times, I don't know about you, but if, if, if I don't budget in the month, uh, one of the challenges, one of the things that eventually happens is you just get a loss of peace of mind. Because you, you can see you have money, but suddenly at some point you don't have it. You start asking, where has this money gone? And it's very easy to now, you know, start saying, oh, you know, we are doing this, we are overdoing, we are doing. But if you were to go down and look at it, you will discover that, uh, you know, money, you know, it, has, it has some way of working. Yeah? I, I wish I could use that phrase in Kikuyu. Money has some way of just working, disappearing. Yeah, uh, and until you're able to look at it, keep checking it, you will find that a lot of peace is lost out of the fact that the budget, the money is not being uh, used. So I think one of the things that that also results is, is, in, is in meeting. And you've mentioned that you've had a Zoom meeting with your family and said, hey, wait a minute, yeah? 
uh, we need to manage what we are doing mm -hmm. with our with our meals. Maybe you don't need to do all the three. And of course, the temptation to keep going to the kitchen is, is high. I know so many people have had to, I've seen several people who have gone into even making bread at home, yeah? because also you have more time, you can make bread, it can be cheaper, or you do very clear budgeting where you know that you, you do every, every week you go to the market, yeah? you know, and as opposed to the guy next in the corner, the kiosk next in the corner, may be more expensive than going to a proper market. Yeah? I don't know about Mombasa, but here there are many other places that are cheap. Over the weekend, we took a drive to Rongai, and, and I was very surprised because my, my wife kept commenting, for those who know Rongai, there is a, near the market, there's a jam. So you can actually see the prices of items in Rongai. And they are actually a third of, of the Nairobi price. Yeah? Yeah? So these kind of things can help us to be able to to gain our peace, to have a family meeting, to explain that, wait a minute, uh, yes, I know we are at home, but also we need to have an element of order in how we do things or how we manage our meals. Um, it's very easy when you live a life of carbohydrates on its own, uh, to keep eating and eating more. So maybe one of the things you can do for breaks, yeah? I know some people do this, you can buy njugu, yeah, Jugu can be a very good break meal. It is filling, but it's cheap. Yeah, and if you buy raw jugu and roast it, you know you can eventually benefit from having a snack, but at the same time, not a very expensive snack. As opposed to you know breakfast likula mkate, then you know break time mkate. You know those mkates just disappear. And if you have teenagers like some of us do, the things just vanish. Yeah. And before you know it, you're buying four or five loaves in a day. Yeah. So I think it's a very important, if you were to look at this financial satisfaction issue, um, over and above just accepting that the reality has brought up a new budget, um, it's also to be able to do something about it, to budget, to put the numbers, to look at what they mean, subsequently have family meetings, have discussions, regulate certain things, and try and begin looking at how you can save costs on uh, some of these things. Uh, I know, of course, I don't know about you, but uh, generally uh, we have this culture of fast food eating, yeah? and yet we, we forget certain other foods that we used to have before. Um, the guaches. By the way, if you eat guache, you, you, you will survive more than if you ate bread, because the guache comes a little. Yeah? The energy is just released a little. Yeah, if you eat bread, which is carbohydrate, it is eaten, you eat and you feel hungry immediately. Yeah. So anyway, I think uh, very good uh, ideas there. Anyone else? Just one last person to share. We have uh, a little time before we finish. Mm. Yes. I have yes, a, yes. I have a, uh, I'm not sure you have, to me, it's not very clear whether you have talked about I think part of the reason, at least myself, I feel a lot of tension and I guess many families are feeling a lot of tension is because of anxiety that possibly there will be no work. So besides the fact that we are spending a lot of money, it's that fear that the husband will not have work or the wife will not have work and we are uncertain. So that gives me so much pressure sometimes, I guess it's, even in a meeting, it can be reflected in my reaction, even without me realizing it. I think I would like you to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Anxiety, what they say about anxiety, and I'm not an expert in mental health, is that you at least talk about it. Yeah. Uh, and already looking at our initial statistics, uh, the husbands and the males who are many, and they always, I don't know that they accuse us, but they say that we don't speak. Yeah. So I think one of the things that is very important is to, is to talk about these things to somebody. Yeah? It could be if you are single, to a friend, or somebody you can confide with. Because these things can eat you up right? when you are there at home on your own. And of course, you begin hearing stories that now the HR departments are thinking of um, you know, uh, coming up with new contracts or you, 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 know, you knew, especially when you went home, 
that uh, I had seen a WhatsApp message that had circulated before that if, if no one has called you or you've not received SMS, just know you, you are not needed. <laughs> <laughs> because it looks like you are no longer relevant. Yeah. It was quite, it was very, it was a very strong WhatsApp message, which, well, may have some truth or not, but I think generally we can't beat ourselves too much. Yeah? Uh, but I think what is very important is to talk about these issues to someone, yeah? uh, is to get it out. Yeah? is to express even the fears because if you don't you will go in getting heated and when you're on your own these things hit you quite a bit yeah? some of us are early ones so you start getting heated at 3 a.m if you have something that you've not resolved 3 a.m whether you slept at midnight or 3 a.m itself you will still be awake yeah and then you start being heated by these things yeah but it's very good to be able to talk about that to because somebody else will see the silver lining that you're not seeing. And they'll tell you, no, but you keep doing what you need to do and begin thinking about this. I have actually a friend of mine uh, who, who, who works in a bookshop and they were told now from, I think from the end of this month, there is no more salary. Yeah? Thank God we've been sharing and we've been trying to get new ideas on what he can do. Over and above the fact that his job is not necessarily well paying he has uh, the wife is expecting I think in, somewhere in June. So I know we have had three or four solutions and I can tell you the solutions came because sometimes you would cry and say look Ray but you need to help me and because of that I will be pushed to talk to my friend. Yeah? So you can imagine if he did not push it then it's very difficult to be able to get a solution for him. Because I'm not sitting in the problem the way he is sitting in the problem. Yeah? But by expressing it and by calling on me, every time he talks about it, I realize, okay, I need to do something. So I think we've had three or four solutions and one maybe now may work where somebody has offered, okay, let him come, we try and see if we can do something about it. And at least as he says when we talk, I get hope. Yeah? I get a bit of hope because if you leave it, on your own, you can cook yourself up. Yeah? So I think it's very important to talk about it uh, because then it will also help you to, to you could say, uh, get another perspective. Yeah? Um, and yes, it's possible that you will actually lose the job, but I think it is something we need to be able to confront it. And if you have a genuine friend and listening to your ideas, they'll say, yeah, the way it's going, it looks like this actually may, may, may not happen. And therefore, we need to start building another solution. What is it that I can do? And we know, generally, there are times when, you know, we are put into a corner and we think that's it. The world is going to come down on us and it's going to disappear, etc. But we know we've had very many of these moments in our life. And once in a while, we know that we eventually get a solution. At that point, when we were stuck, we were not seeing the solution. We were not seeing the answer. But after some time, when we look back at where the problem is, we won't even wonder how we solve the problem. Yeah? And of course, many of us are, are God-fearing. We, we can take solace in prayer. We can pray about it. We can ask God for his, for his help to be able to give us peace, to be able to see, uh, give us solutions, yeah? But critical is to talk about it, is to express it, is to remove it, yeah? So that people will see many silver lining, very many people see many silver lining, and this gives us hope, yeah? It gives us a sense of moving on. Okay, uh, Patricia, go ahead, Patricia. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, uh, nice to be participating in this afternoon session and it is pretty timely. I saw it on Twitter and I did a comment on the same and thank you for having us, Mr. Mutura. Yes. Now, uh, I would want to highlight a few things given the, the polls that you have done in respect to the financial aspect that is a worry to a majority of us. Mm -hmm. 
I think we need to appreciate the power of procurement and supply chain management at a family level as it is being appreciated right now in institutions. Mm -hmm. Because it will help us. There's no way you're going to have a budget and mm -hmm. you do not uh, interrogate your sourcing the way you source and how you manage your inventory in the house. Mm -hmm. That good. is the same way institutions are doing it right now because it is being seen as a function that is helping institutions manage their costs as well as realize value for the money that is not available and which everyone mm -hmm. is trying to hold to because of the uncertainty of the future. Mm -hmm. So we need to appreciate how do you procure, from mm -hmm. whom do you procure, when do you procure, when you bring your items in the house, how do you manage the inventory? Mm -hmm. So that are you able to know when do you replenish, what do you need, what is important, what is being duplicated. You have, mm -hmm. maybe you buy bluebird, you buy jam, you buy butter, do you need to reduce on some of them? Mm -hmm. And now that brings us to meaningful interaction and conversation with family members where people now need to sit and have real talk mm -hmm. that my children sometimes at Previously, we have been spoiled for this, but there is no room for that anymore. Without okay. any fear, people must mm -hmm. have truthful, honest conversation with their children. And don't assume they are children and, uh, and probably feel you'll be subjecting them to some kind of fear or torture. They need mm -hmm. to understand because the future, they may have similar situations. They mm -hmm. must reflect from what they learned at this particular time. Very good contribution. And then also yeah. one more thing in terms of uh, the, 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 the fear, the anxiety and panic. I can honestly, honestly say I'm, I'm, I, I'm a patient of mental health. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have panic and anxiety disorder. And I feel when, uh, is it Charity or Christine who mm -hmm. mentioned about it? Mm -hmm. Now, the bottom and the solution is in the ability of someone to recruit the right social support because it is not everybody you will pursue like your yeah. friend who was working at a bookshop they approached you because they felt you're you're honest and there's someone someone they can confine in and maybe you're not even a blood relative mm -hmm. so you need to people it is high time people need to establish the friendships that they have and confirm are they true friendships or not am i worth investing my time in them in the future whom can I trust? Whom can I not trust? Because such are the avenues you recruit support for such critical moments. Thank you, Mr. Mutura. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think Patricia has touched on very interesting ideas there. Uh, I think the manager, she's got, talked about procurement management at home. So we need to bring all these ideas at home. Uh, and I think very important, yeah, portion management, my meal planning. Uh, I think in the university here, eventually we had another seminar on uh, on uh, just uh, you know nutrition, uh, meal planning, and eventually looking at the portions. And, and I think one other thing that is highlighted very important is to have a discussion. And I want to comment here on something that I have always commented with many people. One of the challenges many of the parents of today have. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I think I have seen it with many parents, is that many of us grew up with a lot of hardship. And uh, when we were living home, one of the things we came, as a, came with in, a, in our new life uh, out here is that I will never suffer the, the way my children suffer. So we, we sometimes have this thing of saying that we will not make it too difficult for our children. We will not say no to our children. We will not, uh, you know, go into difficulty. We will not make their life difficult. Yeah, I, I know some of the, I don't know about you, but some of the things we've had to do at home is to decide, look, among other things, the children will also participate in their, in their activities of home, in cooking, in cleaning. Uh, we will send the house help because now we four teenagers, I think we, we, we don't need a house help anymore, which is what we did last year, and then divided the work. So that even in the cooking and in cleaning, people can see that actually soap ends, uh, these things cost money. Yeah? And, and this conversation, and, and if we were thinking that there is no family conversation, these are some of the aspects of family conversation. 
we cannot think that you know family working as a family is only to watch tv it's a good times we are watching tv we are going out we are eating here we are celebrating here even the bad times where we have to say hey excuse me these portions have to be money these things cost money this we have to reduce this we have to eliminate we cannot go on yeah? mm -hmm. one idea that I, we had today morning i mentioned to my wife is we've been having the small gas uh, at some point our water system was not working the water, hot water system so we've been heating water with a small gas so the last three weeks we had the gas small gas goes up to the up to up to sunday now it's ending on thursday and why because some people have felt their water doesn't get hot so they reheat it and now i'm asking look we are now having to extend the budget of the gas because somebody is just wants to feel a bit hotter and nicer when they are showering yeah etc so conversation sometimes are not pleasant at home and this notion of thinking i live a hard life i cannot have a new hard life with my children i can never say no to them i think these things are a bit misplaced here yeah? And I think it is important that we go back to some of these basics. Yeah, things cost money. We can say no. We can reduce comfort, certain comforts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so you'll allow me to continue with the presentation. Uh, we again, as I said, we don't have too much time as usual in this type of things. So let me share my screen again just to continue my presentation. Uh, let me ask also the poll question number four. I think it will be important to see it from a virtue point of view. Uh, what stop sharing this? So, from a virtue point of view, what is my biggest challenge here? Yeah? Uh, I will launch this poll. You can quickly answer it. Okay, these are the results. So, uh, share the results so that you can see. 21% uh, of us feel uh, being optimistic about things, irrespective of whatever. Hope is one of the challenges we have. The same result as uh, another group I had run this week. Hope. How do we cultivate hope? What is a way to cultivate hope being our key challenge at the moment? Anyone, very quickly, because we have little time now. How do we cultivate hope being optimistic? irrespective uh, anyone wants to say something on that patricia uh i would say you'd cultivate hope based on your previous experience because hope goes hand in hand with faith mm -hmm. so if you are able to have a you moment and reflect on your past to see how you have overcome challenges so I'm saying what one need to do to, to cultivate hope is to reflect on the past and especially when you've had challenges and overcome them. It gives you that, uh, that energy to know if you overcame, you still can do it. Also trying to listen to other people's testimony and uh, seeing how they overcame it gives you the strength and the positivity to even go through to build your hope and know it is going to be well so okay. hope and faith go hand in hand thank you thank you patricia uh just to summarize a bit and you can find and think and look for it more faith hope and charity or faith hope and love are what they we call the supernatural virtues and uh, many times we ask or get them from God. So again, going back to prayer, going back to asking him to give us the strength to, to move on, to survive, even amidst uh, the challenges that are there. Yeah? Okay, uh, so let me continue very quickly. Um, I'm sharing my screen again. Mm, okay, this is also another important question, so I will ask it. Uh, one of the challenges we, we have is many times we have certain baggage or we have a certain package of things that, you know, we have, we have with us that are preventing us to, from eventually having enriching relationships yeah, or friendship. Yeah? So uh, let me just run this through. I think this may be the last one. I know we have more polls. But I'll just run this poll with you. 
what uh, you know what possibly have have I have I had? What is it I have been carrying? You know, in in my family relationship, what is hind hindering me from having a flourishing family relationship? Okay, I'll end the poll at eighty two percent. Okay, interesting. I think the results changed slightly. Um, and this is, a, I want to spend two minutes just talking about this because I don't know about you and I, I took you through the journey of self-reflection, but uh, you will discover that many times the problem of you being able to engage with others is really because of you, not because of others. Yeah? So if you look at the two things that we have at the top yeah, and resolve baggage, yeah? emotional pain of past life, bad relationship with the people who are close to me, especially people who I grew up with or people who raised me or people who are meant to be my parents. Yeah, uh, This is something that is very fundamental Yeah, because, because of the pain of the people I was closest to. Sometimes it makes it very difficult for me to attach myself with others because I am suffering with the people I expected to have had a nourishing or flourishing relationship. And this is something we need to confront so that we resolve it for ourselves. Yeah? Um, and some of these are very complicated problems. Yeah? Some of them are, go to very intimate things and. Uh, and to forgive people who, who are meant to be people who I love, it, it can be very difficult. So you can imagine then if other people are brought into your life, it becomes very difficult to even connect because you have such baggage. Yeah? One of my friends, Dr. Stanley Colway, who runs uh, parenting programs, really tries to tackle this issue of baggage. And unless we unpack that bucket, unless we get it out of ourselves, it becomes very difficult to be able to engage with others. And going back to what we are saying, you know, uh, there's a lot of an I before the we or before the others that we need to think about. Yeah? And to me, this is an area sometimes has been left unresolved, unfortunately. And deep into your, into your deep adulthood or into your family life, you still have huge challenges on this. Yeah? I know one lady who eventually has ha had to leave the, the husband because she was molested at a very young age by a very close relative. And because of that, she had problems in, in her marital life in that topic, in the conjugal union. And of course, it will not work. For, for, for the husband. And, you know, now I think she's in her 50s or 60s, so moving towards 60s, and she's unable to move on. <laughs> it's very difficult. So, again, unless we get this baggage, and some of this baggage sometimes comes in the form of anger or in the form of bursts of annoyances or closing off, which are things you need in, in your normal relationship. And of course now it is, you know, you could say exaggerated or complicated because now we have nowhere to run. We are with the people that we are meant to love unconditionally. So you can't run to the office, you can't run to your networking, you can't run to the bar, you know, all these things are not that easy yeah, anymore. So I think it's very important we try to manage this and resolve the baggage, talking to people, uh, later on, we'll run a survey to see if you're interested in mental services and things like that that can be offered in the University Medical Center. Because we, as somebody said, I think it was Patricia, we, we need to identify a social support system that will be able to bring us back and get us to be part of the community we are in. And we can't do it alone. Yeah? And then a second one is a temperament clash. Uh, I'm going to share with you uh, my screen just to show you an exercise I did with my family the other day uh, because it's very important to be able to know your temperament. And the, the reason for knowing your temperament is, is not uh, just for... Let me share. Let me share. 
is not just for for the sake of knowing look i am like this by default my dna is like this by default yeah is to be able to know the weaknesses and the strengths this is what is fundamental yeah? so temperamentquiz.com is free you can be able to run uh, your temperament test and from it it will give you what your temperament is i'm a choleric melancholy and it will describe to you what a choleric choleric melancholy is uh, and then what are your strengths and weaknesses and then one other thing that you can do is you can actually do a comparison yeah with uh, with some of your friends yeah uh, your family yeah just to be able to know why do we clash yeah so here is a is a comparison with okay this is my boss okay i ask you to do is an ex extreme of myself yeah so this is me and this is uh, him okay he's a complete son uh, this is important to know where your points of clash yeah? uh, so here is a comparison between me and him and then here is something about relating to a choleric relationship tools uh, relationship don'ts yeah? uh, from the point of view of a sanguine relationships do and relationship don'ts yeah so for example, one of the challenges I have with our son, I mentioned to you earlier, who is a similar temperament to this, uh, to my boss, sanguine choleric, is uh, giving them a lot of affection. Yeah? And naturally, I, generally we, uh, we control everything. Yeah? We like to be in charge. Yeah? Uh, we, over, we do not become emotional or expect dramatic displays of affection. This is my natural self, but here I have a son who is 13, but I cannot just work on my natural self. I need to make an effort. For well, thank God I have my wife who is in that particular type. Once in a while, she helps me to manage this. So it's, you may want to take this as one other take home, just to go into temperamentquiz.com, Get to know your temperament, invite your family, and then you can do several comparisons. So, a uh, very important to try and do something like this, just to be able to see uh, out of the two challenges we have, yeah, from our polls. On one hand, is a baggage which we have talked about, saying, "Look, let's try and address it." Social support system, very important. Temperament clash, we try and do something uh, around this. So yeah, so I, here I've made a comment. You can visit that to be able to compare your temperament. Choleric, you're, you either have the, what you call extroverts and introverts. The extroverts are the ones on the left, uh, on the yeah, on my left. Uh, choleric action who are action oriented. These ones are people oriented. Or again, you can always see sometimes a natural clash. Uh, melancholy are always idea oriented and phlegmatic are peace oriented people. Uh, this versus Z may be a clash, etc. So you can go to the site to see a bit more on how you can get to know your spouse, your brothers and sisters, your friends, so that you see areas that you can be able to, you could say, begin accommodating, yeah, because people are like that, or areas that you will need to work on yourself a bit more because you are like this, yeah, etc. Yeah um yeah then i won't go into what can we do uh, critical things uh, one is this issue of a schedule to construct a schedule we've already started with it by saying the starting time and ending time are very important but you cannot live without a schedule it's if you are to take another take home is you have to come up with a program a plan of how the day is run um in marriage, the issue of communicating, talking, yeah? talking about things, dealing with issues. I think we've already mentioned some of these generally, family life, family time. If you're married, I think you also need to look for a time where you talk about things. Sometimes with this constraint of being at home, it's difficult. So you can take a walk so that you can express uh, you know, some of those ideas you have. Sometimes you want to express things a bit strongly. Take a walk, take a drive talk about it but we can never think that we will solve family life or family issues just by thinking about them we have to act and part of the action is to talk and then there is this eight dimension booklet you can be able to look at and then there's a courses and activities that are available here in sps we run some courses 
Uh, if you're interested in it, uh, we have in the, in the in your evaluation form, which you will eventually do, and it will also be shared with you. You can be able to indicate any interest, and out of that, we will get in touch with you to see how we can be of assistance. Yeah. Um, this is a typical timetable. Okay, you will get it in the PowerPoint presentation. But ladies and gentlemen, you have, you cannot survive without a schedule. It's impossible. If you want peace, you have to write things down. You have to write a budget down, you have to write a schedule down. It has, there has to be something, and this is part of the family life. If you have children, people have to be communicated to that they are doing a schedule. You need to do certain things in certain times. You have to have a certain time you sleep. These days, people imagine that they will somehow wake up by some magician when they sleep at three. It's not possible. We all need rest of a particular time. And we will not expect magic that, you know, I'll just figure it out. No, no. If you want to rise early, you have to also sleep early. Yeah? It's, it's pure and simple. 